Hello everybody, my name is Leo and with this video we will share how to profile an amp with the IK Multimedia Tonix application. Then we will make some detailed tests to verify how the profile compares to the real tube amp, checking out the frequency response, the dynamic range management and the note envelope of the profiles versus the real tube amp counterpart. Then we will also check out three profiles I have created in a very short demo song in order to have a clear idea of the quality of the profiles created by the Tonix application and to verify how touch sensitive they are. And finally, I will give you my two cents. So I hope you enjoy and please don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell as it would be of a great help. Let's start. First of all, what are we going to profile? We're going to profile a Marshall Plexi connected to a greenback speaker with two microphones, an SM57 and a Royer 1 to 1. The SM57 is going to a Chandler Germanium preamplifier, where the Royer 1 to 1 is going to an EV preamp. As an audio interface, we are going to use my Apollo X16 and I'm going to use a Radial DI box the one shown in the screen. So the first information here I want to share is that you don't need to buy the IK multimedia box, you just need a reamp box. For instance, my radial one, that could be whatever reamp box you may have. The first thing you have to do once you open the Tonix app is to go to the modeler tab here. In this way, you're gonna open the procedure to capture your amp and the application will also tell to your audio interface to switch to 44.1 kHz at 24 bits. At least, this is what is happening automatically with my Apollo X16. <coughs> the second step is to select if you are profiling a guitar rig or a bass rig. I'm obviously capturing a guitar rig and here the application is asking us if we want to capture an amp plus a cab, an amp plus a cab and a distortion pedal, just a pedal, just an amp or a stomp and an amp. I'm gonna capturing an amp plus a cabinet. Here you have to set up the connections to your audio interface, to your monitors and your guitar and your microphones. Actually I have already done once the application so you see here everything is already selected but if it is the first time you're gonna find here everything not selected. You have to select your audio interface as the output device and your audio interface as an input device. And then in my case the guitar is connected to the line 5 of my audio interface. The reamp box is connected to the line out number 8 that then is connected to my Marshall amplifier. The microphones are connected to the preamplifiers and they are connected to the line 6 and 7 of my audio interface and then I have obviously my monitors connected to the monitor left and monitor right output of my audio interface. These are the connections that are fine for me and obviously you have to find out the connections that are fine for you. The one thing that you can't miss is the reamp box. As the application sends signal to your amplifier through a reamp box. Let's move forward. Now here the application is asking to verify the level of your guitar. Here, as you can notice, my levels are just right because I'm not going into the yellow or red zone, but I'm just in the middle. Here, I can hear my amp. Okay, everything is fine also here in terms of volumes. And now the application is gonna ask me to check out the volumes of the microphones. I mean, the microphones are connected to the preamplifiers that are then connected to my audio interface that is connected into the application. And it is important not to have distortion in the signal chain. So 
So here, as you may notice, my second microphone, which is the SM57, is a little bit distorting, so I have to reduce the volume. And now it's fine. Another very important thing, we can also blend the two microphones, so I can have more SM57 or more Royer in my tone, actually. Let's give it a little bit of more SM57. It is very important uh, with this step uh, that you really check out that the tone you are profiling is the one you want in terms of blending of the microphones, in terms of setting of your amp, because what you are profiling is what you are gonna get. And if you have a bad tone, you're gonna profile a bad tone, obviously. Let's proceed, and now we can start the capturing procedure. This part is pretty similar to the camper. With some impulses and some noise. And then it starts playing. It takes longer actually than I expected. Now here you can select the level of accuracy of your profile, training the neural network. Now you have three levels, fast, default and advanced. Fast is obviously the quicker one, but it is less precise. Default is kind of in the middle and advanced is accuracy level that provides you with the best results. And it takes a lot of time. I have already done this procedure once and I have profiled my Mesa Boogie Long Star and it has required one hour and 40 minutes, a lot. Now, I'm gonna do the advance once more. Let's start. Creating network and so on and so forth, one hour and 40 minutes. So, see you later. Here we are after one hour and 40 minutes and our neural network should have been trained. So we can now proceed. Obviously after all this time the application is asking us if all the connections are still right and they are. We can proceed and now we can check the final result comparing it to the real amp. So this is the tone model. <laughs> Real amp. It sounds pretty good and before making our more scientific comparison let's finish the procedure. The procedure asks us to select the skin of our amp, so we need a plexi. I would need bigger skins because I don't see clearly the control knobs. This is more reminiscent of a plexi actually, so I would go with this one. We have plexi lead. Okay, now it's time to make uh, a direct comparison between the profile and the real amp. Let's do it. We will now compare the profile versus the real Marshall Plexi chain profile. Actually, I have used a specific profile just using an SM57. In fact, during the profiling procedure, you can use two mics defining the level of each of them. I mean, how the two mics should blend together. And this blending level would be almost impossible to replicate with the real deal. 
Therefore, we will compare the real plexi connected to a Greenback speaker with an SM57 connected to a Chandler Germanium preamp against the AK profile of the same rig. We will make the comparison using four DI tracks previously recorded in my digital audio workstation, thus being sure that we are gonna use the exact same leaks for both the amp and the profile. With the four DI tracks we will check out, first of all, the overall frequency range response, then just the bass frequency, then we will check out the dynamic range management, I mean, how the profile cleans up and breaks up according to how soft or hard you play the strings, and finally we will check out the note envelope. After this more scientific test, I will play a little demo song so that we can also hear three profiles I have created in action, checking out how they respond to our touch. I will not say anything during the sound test and in my two cents section of this video we will share our impressions and the final considerations. Let's start!
final considerations here, and please notice that I have purchased the tonics with my own money, and this video is not sponsored. Obviously, you may disagree with my conclusions, and this is totally fine. First of all, the profiles are very, very accurate. Full stop. You can get a really good and accurate recreation of your real amp, both in terms of tone and how the profile reacts to your touch. It's one of the closest tone or profile I have ever listened, honestly, and it's really difficult, if not impossible, to distinguish the real amp from the profile. I would also highlight that the profile is a specific picture of the amp. I mean, you capture a specific configuration of the gain and the tone knobs. If you change the knobs in the amp and the ones of the profiles, the two tones start to differ one from the other progressively. Therefore, my suggestion is to make as many captures of the same amp as the ones equal to your favorite settings. Another thing I would like to highlight is that uh, you have to use uh, the Tunix uh, application and profiles together with your favorite plugins. For instance, in the Tunix you don't have a delay, a chorus, etc. Therefore, the Tunix is intended to work in conjunction with your other plugins. A little thing I would like to mention is that, at least so far and as far as I have understood, you cannot use uh, at the same time a distortion pedal and an amp, but you can use one or the other. You can overcome this limitation loading two instances of the Tonix plugin in your DO, as I have done in my little demo song. I would also mention that the training procedure which guarantee the best quality is very, very long. In my opinion, too long. For profiling all my amps, each amp with two or three settings, I would need to spend more than 24 hours of continuous profiling, which is a lot of time. It would be also nice to have a way to save the procedure just after the capture and before the training of the network, so that you can, for instance, make a network training with low quality and then rise the quality sometime after without having to restart the procedure from scratch. Or for instance, you can start a batch network training in the night. On the other hand, the profiling procedure is very easy and well guided. It's much easier than the one of the camper. I mean, it's easier to get great results than with the camper. For instance, with the Tonix, each step is very well guided and actually the plugin plays standard leaks to refine the profiles, where with the camper you have to play your leaks and you never know when there is no more space to improve. Finally, it is still not clear to me how I can, for instance, download the profiles I have created and sell them. I know, we all would like to have everything for free, but uh, what is gonna be the incentive for professional users to make profiles if they cannot make any profit? I mean, if I spend 24 hours to profile my amps professionally, I would like to be able to sell those profiles I have created. Is it so strange? How can we make profits from being musicians if everything has to be free? This is still a big strength of the camper, as many professional profile creators can make profiles trying to gain a profit for their work, thus enhancing the level of quality of the profiles available. If everything is gonna be free, will end up with thousands of profiles, but with very few of an eye quality, and with the best producers without any incentive to create great profiles, at least in my opinion. But now I'm very curious to hear your opinions. What do you think about the Tonix profiles? Are they accurate? Should everything be free? Or should we be rewarded for our effort? Please let me know your precious and valuable opinions in the comment section below. We have now reached the end of this video, I hope you enjoy and if you did it, please subscribe to my channel, ring the notification bell and leave a thumb up, it would be of a great help. If you're interested in my IRs or in my camper profiles, you can check out the link in the card above or description below, where there is also a link to a playlist of songs of mine. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next video, bye bye.